Oscar Felier here. We'd like to show you a flight that was created by Buzz Fender. Um, incredible uh, flight tire that needed to find a fly that was excellent and red fish. But I must tell you that I tied this fly in so many different ways and colors that have taken from salmon to baby tarpon, redfish, sea trout, anything that's in the flat you can catch with this shrimp fly. Now, the hook I'm going to use is a grip hook number 21612 and a size 8. Now, we don't need to have a extremely long hook or big hook to catch this fish. So, let's start by wrapping the thread. This is a burnt orange thread, 140 veneer. And we're going to cover all of the hook, all the way from the behind the eye to the top of the bend of the hook. This will ensure that every material I tied, it will be securely placed. It will not skip. It's very difficult to hold things on a very smooth surface such as it is. So it is a chunk of a hook. The first material we use is um, craft fur. This craft fur comes in so many different colors, but this is perfect for this fly, which will imitate the trim. So I will take a card on this. I don't usually measure. I'm, I'm, I'm also a cook, and I don't measure when I cook either. I just take a bunch of material that I think is going to work and cut it off. Now, a little tip, all this thick part I'm not going to use, it's going to go in my little bin here, but later on I will mix it with different furs and make excellent wet dubbing. I want to get this ends even, so I'm going to pull the longer fibers. Now when I think I have enough, and they're going to be at least one or two length of a shank of a hook, this is going to be two. The tight on top, make sure that you get the beautiful thing about this thread, which is an A1 plus, it's called by Danville, is that you can really put a lot of pressure on it without breaking it. And to tie flies for salt water, especially, I want to tie the flies quite snug so nothing will come loose. And I remind you that all those fish in salt water are a heck of a lot harder than flies than the fish in fresh water. Once I get this in location, I'm going to let the thread all the way to in front of the point of the hook. That is going to be my balance point to add the lead eyes. This lead eye size is an extra small. I think by ounce was 1.60th of an ounce. That's always we figure eight anything that is in an hour glass shape to be sure that it remains in place. And no matter how everybody show you how to do this, it's all good. It's just a different way of doing it for other fishermen or fly tires. This worked for me. And to be able to be sure that the eyes are noticeable in the fly, we're going to use a marker to mark them black. Let's see here. Now they will be very, very visible. There. The next material is called a stas. Now this stas color is called peach, peach stas. Now make sure that you don't get the, the stas that has the pearlescent. This is going to be a translucent stas. So you can see through it. And this fly looks 10 times better in the water than it does out of the water. And that's what's important because that's what the fish sees. So I just want to make sure that I got this very well secure. And we'll wind this first in front of the eye. And then we're going to crisscross the other eye so we have full coverage of that eye. Once we get in front of it, we'll just secure that material with our thread. Let it hang below it. Excuse me. Before we hang it, we have to invert the hooks. There. Now let it hang below it so it be out of your way because this fly will ride with the hooks pointing up. All right. 
Now we need to add some material that will impart some action. In other words, it's going to make the fly look alive. For that, I selected this. It's called Silly Legs. And all you need is four of them. So if we double this that I just took off, we should have the four legs. This leg will move every time you pull on the fly. And that will give it the illusion that it's alive and trying to escape. Normally, that kind of action triggers the predator mechanism in the in the prey fish and will attack. Again, the, sh the shank of a hook is my measuring stick, so I'm going to measure that to be the length of the shank of a hook, and that's what I'm going to attach to behind the eyes. Two or three wounds, then fold over the other two filaments, so they stay in the upper side of this fly. Now you can get this all the way to the back. What we do next is just wrap the stash tightly. There we go. Now, you could be using the rotation on the vice. These vices are so great and they have a good rotation. But I want to put all the filaments towards the bend of the hooks, and you can't do that when you're rotating. So I'm going to do one wound at a time. Just two wounds. Then you'll see me pull back on the filament of the stash until I get within about a sixteenth of an inch of the eye of the hook. Then we're going to add two more materials, but we'll get there in a second. As I said, this fly don't look like like a real shrimp when you have it off the water, but when you make it in the water, it's a completely different ball game. I think I got enough room there to put the tail, so I'm going to tie the, the stats there, finish it off. Trim it. There. I would like to have just a very mild little flash that will represent the carpus or the exoskeleton of the shrimp and for that we're just going to use a few fibers of this um, crystal flash that the in color is called the root beer so we're going to put those five strands on top then cut them all you need is add about five of those strands there okay the last thing we're going to do to this shrimp is put a weed guard. Now, we all know that shrimp hangs around grass, seagrass, and I have a piece of 30 pound uh, mason hard mono. To make the, the, um, the weed guard, I'm going to crush one end flat and fold it. That will create the footing. Can you see that footing? Okay. And now we're going to taper that footing so it doesn't make a lot of bulk when we tie in the head. And to that, we're just going to use this little crimper. To trim a little. I can't see from the side, so I got to turn it this way. There. Okay, now I'm going to make a little dentation with the, the sharp ends of this so that the thread will dig into that and keep them in place. There. And the neat thing about it, this, this harmano will prevent the grass from getting into the hook and it all it takes is one and i like that now let's get this whip finish in here then. about seven grounds that's good enough i'm going to put in my nail make sure that all everything is in place 
for the thing if it is in place, then I'll give it another wound. It doesn't matter if the hair's a little bit thick, the fish will probably never get to see that. All they're going to see is that shrimp trying to escape. Yeah, that should, that should do it. Okay. There's uh, many different types of um, lockers or finishes you can put to finish the fly off. I don't particularly preach one or the other. Whatever works for you, you go ahead and use it. They just want to pull the layer. I hope that everything is visible to you. But that's Buses Shrimp, a very productive fly. I'm going to rotate it so you can see all sides of it. <laughs> 